The news conference of Senator Robert F. Kennedy, live from Washington. First from New York, CBS News correspondent Roger Mudd. Good morning. We are broadcasting this morning the announcement of Democratic Senator Robert F. Kennedy of New York that he will be a candidate for the presidency. You can't find but one in a thousand who believes he will not make that announcement. The senator is doing so in the face of almost solid opposition from the Democratic Party professionals and the state chairman of the Democratic Party in this country. Only three state chairmen, New York, Oregon, and Tennessee, have come out in favor of Mr. Kennedy's candidacy. He's also making the announcement uh, in the opposition of thousands of young Democrats who claim that Kennedy has become an opportunist trying to cash in on the courage of Eugene McCarthy, who was the uh, uh, successful candidate in the New Hampshire primary, at least uh, successful in terms of, of uh, indicating the great feeling that exists in the country against Lyndon Johnson. The senator will be entering, along with some members of his family, the Senate's ornate caucus room on Capitol Hill, already crowded with... Uh, as many reporters as there are in Washington, which appears to be now over uh, three or four hundred. This is the scene of uh, John Kennedy's presidential announcement on January 12, 1960. It was the scene of Stuart Symington's announcement eight years ago, and it was the scene of Senator McCarthy's announcement last November. This caucus room is also where Robert Kennedy worked as the young chief counsel on the McClellan Labor Rackets Committee, which held its famous televised hearings in this room uh, back in 1954 through 57. Senator McCarthy himself will be watching this Kennedy press conference, but the Minnesota senator will be watching it from the studios of CBS affiliate WBAY-TV in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Mrs. Kennedy, Mrs. Robert Kennedy, is now uh, in the caucus room. Everybody on tiptoes. The still photographers with their cameras uh, stretched overhead trying to get a picture of the uh, Kennedy entourage as it makes its way into this uh, formal room, which really looks like a gilded German nightclub. High ceilings and uh, gold-covered eagles and indirect lighting, heavy columns. This is the scene outside the caucus room. And I've heard someone yell, here we go, which means uh, the procession has started. Frank Mankiewicz with the pipe in his mouth directly ahead of Senator Robert Kennedy. The applause not coming from reporters, but from uh, supporters of the senator. Senator Kennedy, uh, after his uh, announcement here, uh, immediately comes to New York to take part in the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Down in front they're yelling. I am announcing today my candidacy for the presidency of the United States. I do not run for the presidency merely to oppose any man, but to propose new policies. I run because I am convinced that this country is on a perilous course and because I have such strong feelings about what must be done, and I feel that I'm obliged to do all that I can. I run to seek new policies, policies to end the bloodshed in Vietnam and in our cities, policies to close the gaps that now exist between black and white, between rich and poor, between young and old, in this country and around the rest of the world. I run for the presidency because I want the Democratic Party and the United States of America to stand for hope instead of despair, for reconciliation of men instead of the growing risk of world war. I run because it is now unmistakably clear that we can change these disastrous 
divisive policies only by changing the men who are now making them. But the reality of recent events in Vietnam has been glossed over with illusions. The report of the Riot Commission has been largely ignored. The crisis in gold, the crisis in our cities, the crisis in our farms and in our ghettos have all been met with too little and too late. No one who knows what I know about the extraordinary demands of the presidency can be certain that any mortal can adequately fill that position. But my service on the National Security Council during the Cuban Missile Crisis, the Berlin Crisis of 1961 and 1962 and later, the negotiations on Laos and on the Nuclear Test Ban Treaty have taught me something about both the uses and the limitations of military power, about the value of negotiations with allies and with enemies, about the opportunities and the dangers which await our nation in many corners of the globe in which I have traveled. As a member of the Cabinet and a member of the Senate, I have seen the inexcusable and ugly deprivation which causes children to starve in Mississippi, black citizens to riot in Watts, young Indians to commit suicide on their reservations because they've lacked all hope and they feel they have no future, and proud and able-bodied families to wait out their lives in empty idleness in eastern Kentucky. I have traveled and I have listened to the young people of our nation and felt their anger about the war that they are sent to fight and that the, about the world that they are about to inherit. In private talks and in public, I have tried in vain to alter our course in Vietnam before it further saps our spirit and our manpower, further raises the risks of wider war, and further destroys the country and the people it was meant to save. I cannot stand aside from the contest that will decide our nation's future and our children's future. The remarkable New Hampshire campaign of Senator Eugene McCarthy has proven how deep are the present divisions within our party and within our country. Until that was publicly clear, my presence in the race would have been seen as a clash of personalities rather than issues. But now that that fight is won and over policies which I have long been challenging, I must enter that race. The fight is just beginning, and I believe that I can win. I have previously communicated this decision to President Johnson. And late last night, my brother, Senator Edward Kennedy, traveled to Wisconsin to communicate my decision to Senator McCarthy. I made clear through my brother to Senator McCarthy that my candidacy would not be in opposition to his, but in harmony. My aim is to both support and expand his valiant campaign in the spirit of his November 30th statement. Taking one month at a time, it is important now that he achieves the largest possible majority next month in Wisconsin, in Pennsylvania, and in the Massachusetts primaries. I strongly support his effort in those states, and I urge all my friends to give, the, give him their help and their votes. Both of us will be encouraging like-minded delegates to the National Convention. But both of us want, above all else, an open Democratic Convention in Chicago, free to choose a new course for our party and for our country. To make certain that this effort will still be effective in June, I am required now to permit the entry of my name into the California primary to be held in that month. And I do so in the belief, which I will strive to implement, that Senator McCarthy's forces and mine 
will be able to work together in one form or another. My desire is not to divide the strength of those forces seeking a change, but rather to increase it. Under the laws of Oregon and Nebraska, this decision requires the Secretary of State in each of these states to place my name on the ballot. But in no state will my efforts be directed against Senator McCarthy. Both of us are campaigning to give our forces and our party an opportunity to select the strongest possible standard bearer for the November election to ensure that my candidacy must be tested beginning now, five months before the convention, and not after the primaries are over. I think that is the least that I can do to meet my responsibilities to the Democratic Party and to the people of the United States. Finally, my decision reflects no personal animosity or disrespect toward President Johnson. He served President Kennedy with the utmost loyalty and it was extremely kind to me and members of my family in the difficult months which followed the events of November of 1963. I have often commended his efforts in health, in education, and in many other areas. And I have the deepest sympathy for the burden that he carries today. But the issue is not personal. It is our profound differences over where we are heading and what we want to accomplish. I do not lightly dismiss the dangers and the difficulties of challenging an incumbent president. But these are not ordinary times, and this is not an ordinary election. At stake is not simply the leadership of our party and even our country. It is our right to the moral leadership of this planet. I thank you. I appreciate the members of my family and my office showing up. Senator one of the first questions, you say that you are, in effect, uniting with Senator McCarthy in creating this new force. At the Budapest conference, Gus Hall, head of the Communist Party, said he welcomed McCarthy's campaign to set up this new anti-war movement. Are you going to accept his endorsement, too? No, and I don't believe Senator McCarthy did. I think that that issue and that question regarding the patriotism of Senator McCarthy or anyone else who happens to have a different point of view about the course that we're following in Vietnam was decided in New Hampshire, and I hope that it will never be brought up again. I'm not raising a question of patriotism. I'm raising a que question that Gus Hall, at the head of when 66 oh, nation, nation, communist nations... What's this thing? I think was getting one and an answer to the question whether I'm accepting the endorsement of Gus Hall. I am not, and I believe I can speak for Senator McCarthy that he is not either. Senator Kennedy, there have been speculations, Senator, that this is opportunism on your part, that McCarthy had the courage to go into New Hampshire while you hesitated. Now that you're after his glory, well, first, as I said, I don't believe that I could. You mean I have to repeat that? <laughs> A lot of nasty things involved. Uh, the question was whether uh, uh, the charge has been raised about the uh, question of whether this is opportunistic of my coming into the contest at this time after Senator McCarthy had uh, gone into the New Hampshire primary. As I said, I've spoken on these issues and these questions for a number of years, 
and how I feel about them. I felt, uh, and I think it was generally accepted, that if I had gone into the primary in New Hampshire, whether and if I had won the New ha primary in New Hampshire or if I had done well in the primary in New Hampshire, it would have been felt at that time that this was a personal struggle. It would have been written in the press that this was a personal struggle. Uh, every time I have spoken on Vietnam over the period of the past several years, every time I have spoken on what I think needs to be done as far as the cities are concerned, it's been put in the context of a personal struggle uh, between myself and President Johnson. Uh, therefore, we would get away from what the issues are which divide this country. I think the New Hampshire primary established that the division that exists in this country, the division that exists in the Democratic Party are there, that I haven't brought that about, that what uh, has brought that about is what uh, President Johnson, the policies that have been followed by President Johnson. Now, as far as what is happening at the moment, I can't believe that anybody thinks that this is a pleasant struggle from now on, or that I'm asking for a free ride. I've got five months ahead of me as far as the, the convention is concerned. I'm going to go into primaries. I'm going to present my case to the American people. I'm going to go all across this country. Now, if you look at the history of the United States, just in the last few years or down through our history, many people, many of those who have been candidates have gone into no primaries whatsoever. A number have gone into some primaries and then dropped out, as, uh, as, as we saw with uh, Governor Romney just, Romney just recently. Others uh, have felt that they shouldn't go into primaries and have come in at the time of the convention. I believe in, the, in that system of going in and having oneself tested before the American people. I'm willing to do that. And I'm going around this country and I'm going in the primary states and then the people will be able to judge. I'm not asking for a free ride. I'm putting my candidacy and what I believe that I can do for the future of this country and what needs to be done in this country to the American people. Uh, Senator McCarthy had gotten 5% of the vote in New Hampshire, would you be here today? He didn't get 5% of the vote. But the question is, Senator. I just don't, uh, I mean, that's a hypothetical question. As I said, I, what New Hampshire primary established was that the fact that there was this deep division within the country that had nothing to do with me that had to do with the following of uh, various policies. The fact is that he did not uh, receive 5%, and I'm going to have to proceed on the basis of what he did receive. Well, that's a criticism, uh, Senator. Uh, one, two, Senator, some analysts are already saying that your decision will so divide the Democratic Party, uh, moderates and slightly to the left of middle, that it will virtually assure the nomination of President Johnson something which one infers you manifestly oppose unless he radically changes his policy. That's correct. And second, uh, that it is likely to make it easier for a Republican to win in November. How much did those considerations uh, get cranked into your computer of decision? Well, obviously, those comment? were all matters that I considered very deeply. Uh, I think first we have to understand, in order to win the uh, nomination, you're going to require, I think, 1,312 votes. Uh, if you won all of the primaries, you wouldn't come anywhere near the 1,312 votes that are required. Uh, so uh, even if one individual went in and won all of the primaries, that in of itself is not going to win the nomination. What is involved, really, is uh, the fact that the Democratic Party and those who are going to go to the convention accept the fact that uh, the policies that are being followed by the United States and by the government at the present time are a mistake. I think I broaden that. I don't think that I narrow it. I think that I broaden it. I think Senator McCarthy has certain strengths. I think I add. I think I have certain strengths. And together that we add to the opposition that presently exists. It will give further give an opportunity for the Democratic Party to select at the convention the strongest possible candidate. So I don't, uh, it's, it's not just a question of winning the primaries. I don't think that the uh, New Hampshire, the significance of New Hampshire was the fact that Senator McCarthy won 22 of the 24 delegates, or 26 delegates. The fact is of what vote he got and the opposition that was demonstrated by the people of New Hampshire to the policy that we're being followed at the present time. I think I add to that. I think I add to that by going into the primary myself. Senator, Senator you indicate here that you will drastically change our policy on Vietnam. In at least a general way, can you tell us what As you know, I've written about it and talked about it over the period of the last several years. Uh, and uh, the details of what uh, 
I think, are set forth in a uh, book that I wrote, uh, To Seek a Newer World, uh, the details of, of how I think that uh, we could arrive at a solution to the problem of Vietnam, but basically I'm in favor of de-escalating the struggle there. I'm uh, basically in favor of uh, the South, Vietne South Vietnamese uh, taking over more of the effort and less of the effort being in the hands of the United States government and American soldiers. I'm uh, in favor of our making it quite clear to the South Vietnamese that the corruption should end, that they have to have a general mobilization, and that they have to draft 18-year-olds uh, and 19-year-olds. And uh, I'm in favor of uh, negotiating with the National Liberation Front, as I have said. Uh, and, uh, and I think that we have to make it clear that the National Liberation Front is going to play a role in the future political process of South Vietnam. Yes, and I've also said uh, in the past that I think that the, in order to gain, that the North Vietnamese have refused to come to the negotiating table until we have stopped the bombing. I'm in favor of taking that step. They have not requested or suggested that uh, it be done on a permanent basis. And uh, as I have said, if the negotiations are unsuccessful or if they use that period of time in a way that is adverse to our military forces there, then I think that we can take the retaliatory action. If you fail to win the nomination, will you support President Biden or whoever the Democratic nomination? I, uh, I will decide that at the uh, time of the uh, convention. I would hope that uh, through the debate and the discussion that it will be clear that the policies of the United States at the moment, both in Southeast Asia, in our cities here, and in the undeveloped, toward the undeveloped nations of the world, as well as uh, what needs to be done in our rural areas at home will be changed. I will decide, however, that during, uh, at the time of the convention. I, just, I, I won't add to the, uh, my answer. I will make that decision. Senator Kennedy, yes. uh, do you think that the gold crisis today is tied to our policy on Vietnam? Yes, I do. I don't think that you can escape that. The fact is that we're spending $30 billion a year in Vietnam. Uh, several billions of dollars are in the form of an outflow that uh, cannot be stopped if the war and, and Secondly, the, uh, the gold crisis is basically a lack of confidence in the United States and the policies that are being followed by the United States at the moment. Uh, and uh, so there's no question that the gold crisis that we're facing is intimately and uh, irrevocably tied to what is going on in Senator, South Carolina. Senator, Senator, will you go into Wisconsin yes. and other states to campaign for Senator McCarthy? Yes, I shall. Uh, uh, Clark, I, 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 I wait for Clark, and then I'll come back to you. Excuse me. If negotiations begin, will you withdraw? Uh, I do not uh, plan to. Uh, I, would, uh, I think that uh, it's not only a question of negotiations, it's a question of what our position is at the time of negotiations. I think, as I have said before, that uh, the, state, the message that was sent to uh, Ho Chi Minh in February of 1967, which was the basis of our negotiations, was a mistake. So I, uh, I think that it's a question of what our negotiation, negotiating position is and what is being accomplished at that period of time and what the conditions and situations are in the country. I think it's all so terribly important what we're de doing here in the United States and what is happening in our cities, what is happening in the relationship to people, one to another, age groups, the division that exists in age groups, the division that exists in the races, and the divisions that exist on the war in Vietnam. Mr. Molinoff. Senator, what was uh, your response that you got back from President Johnson when you sent word to him? Was there any response? I don't think that he uh, indic indicated either pleasure or displeasure. I didn't, uh, I'll tell you this, I did not talk to him personally. I talked to uh, a representative of his, so I do not know what his when he heard the information, I don't know what his personal reaction was. Senator Kennedy, what could you summarize your policy briefly on Vietnam? Could you summarize your policy briefly uh, for the cities and for the tension that is piling up for this coming summer? I think summer? the most important thing that we need right at the moment is uh, jobs. Uh, I think that uh, man needs uh, dignity and hope for the future and the possibility of raising his family properly. And I think that the, what we need at the moment to head off the crisis uh, is, is jobs for our men in the ghettos, but also jobs for the men in the Delta, jobs for the men in eastern Kentucky, jobs for the uh, men and the Indians that live on the reservations where the unemployment rate is 80 percent. 
I don't think it's just a question of providing jobs in the cities because people are flowing from the rural areas of the United States into the cities because they can't find employment there. So I think they're intimately and personally connected. So I think that jobs is the most important. After that, I think uh, problems of education. Our young men and women are not being educated properly in our schools and uh, the ghetto schools. Three out of, uh, only three out of 10 graduate from high school. And those who graduate from high school only have a 50-50 chance of uh, the equivalent of an eighth grade education. We have to do a great deal more about education. We have to do more about housing. But the immediate problem, the immediate uh, task seems to me jobs. There's legislation now before the Senate of the United States. I would like to see the President of the United States support that legislation as I do. They opposed it last year. I think it would have uh, been a very important step forward. Senator. Senator. <laughs> indication that you'll cooperate with Senator McCarthy. Does that foresee a possible pooling of strength? I would like to do, take any step that uh, is uh, necessary to uh, cooperate and work with Senator McCarthy. A number of Democratic leaders have indicated they're going to remain with President Johnson. Do you have any firm delegate support as of now? And when will you be begin campaigning? I'm, uh, I'm going to present uh, my uh, cause and what I believe has to be done for the country uh, as soon as possible. Uh, I expect that there will be some uh, Democratic leaders who will be opposed to me, as there will be some who support me. I am going, to, I'm going to the American people and across this country and the, all of the states of the Union, as many as I can, to present what I think we can accomplish as far as the future, what, what the soul of this country is and what this country stands for. And that is what I believe that we've lost. I don't think it's a question just of policies, of what specific step you take in the cities or specific step that you might take in Vietnam. I can't, as uh, some others have come uh, before the American people and say, I know if I'm elected president of the United States, the war in Vietnam is going to be ended and it's going to be finished. I come before the American people and say that I think that we can do better and that I think we can make greater progress than we have in the past and that this country stands for something special not only for our own people, but around the rest of the world, and that we're in great danger of losing that. And I want to make an effort myself to present that. And as I say, I come in with, with a very difficult road ahead, which all of which I recognize. I'm not asking anybody to hand anything to me. I'm not asking anybody to give anything to me. I'm going to go to the people, and I'm going to make an effort. And I think uh, that it's worthwhile. <laughs> Mr. Hurley. Uh, Senator, how much support do you expect to get from organized labor, its leadership, and rank and file? Well, obviously, I'm going to need some uh, support from the uh, members of labor organizations, or my effort will not be successful. Uh, I would hope that uh, perhaps uh, some of those uh, labor leaders uh, would support me. The indications have been from their public pronouncements and public statements that they are supporting President Johnson and. Uh, uh, and that I can understand. In the back. Senator, Senator why did you reject the alternative of putting your strength behind Senator McCarthy's drive? For the because I think, uh, first, I think by, that he has strength and I have individual strength. I don't think that just supporting an individual delivers that. But I think, first, going across the country and, and that I have strengths that I can, that I can uh, contribute uh, in opposition to what we are doing at the moment, and secondly, which I think is terribly important, giving some alternatives, alternative policies for the United States to follow as far as the future. I don't think that this is a question of just opposition. And I know that Senator McCarthy has some uh, suggestions as to what we should do, but I also have some ideas. And I don't think that the Democratic Party or the people of the United States lose at all by considering those. And there is a greater possibility that more people that are involved in this, there is a greater possibility of having the strongest possible candidate. We've uh, had a good deal of feeling in the country that there is not enough discussion of issues, that there is not enough feeling that the American people or the political parties mean anything and that they have any contact with political leaders. I think uh, by uh, my going into it, that I add to that and that people can make a greater contribution and have a feeling of greater participation, and also uh, that uh, those who feel the same way that I feel about some of these issues can make their views known. So I think that I can contribute to that. Senator, is there an implication in your remarks that uh, 
that you or Senator McCarthy would back out of the California primary before a vote in order to have a united, uh, a united vote on the issue? Well, I am going in, as I said, I'm going into uh, the state of California. I would hope that we could work out, and I'm going to make a country, uh, the best possible effort to work it out so that uh, we can work together out there. But uh, I think that it's premature to judge what he would like to do or what I can do. As I say, I'm in this, uh, and uh, I in, I'm in it uh, because uh, of the, the strong feeling, so I'm not dis and what I think can be done, so I'm not discussing now about getting out. Uh, go ahead. I'd rather not talk about it uh, on the basis of uh, personalities. I uh, have some grave reservations about the policies and programs that are being followed at the moment. Do you, do you feel you could work toward your goals as a vice presidential candidate on a Johnson ticket? Uh, no, and my feeling is that President Johnson wouldn't feel that he could work toward his with me. <laughs> I don't like... To I'm not here to speak for him, but that's what my feeling is. Any understanding with Senator McCarthy on how you could campaign, as you put it, in harmony? No, I told him uh, through Senator Edward Kennedy what my feelings were, as I've said here today. Well, how can you campaign in harmony when you're both trying for the nomination? Because I think that it's important that he win in the uh, primaries in Wisconsin, uh, that it's important that he wins uh, well in Massachusetts and Pennsylvania, because I think that furthers the cause, the basic cause in which we both believe as to what we should accomplish for the future, I think I can also contribute to that by campaigning around the country. Campaign for him in those three states? Well, I don't think that that's what we said. I said that we're going to try to work together, and uh, I will make every effort to work together. I, as I also said, I'm entering my name in the California primary. Senator, 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 I'm placed in the primary. Senator, will you stick it out to the end, regardless of what happens in the primaries? Is there a possibility that you might have grown? I plan uh, to uh, make this effort uh, because I believe that I can win. And uh, I plan to make this effort because I uh, think that, that uh, the policies and programs in which I believe uh, can uh, bring about some differences in the United States. I go into this effort with that idea and plus. Do you expect the weakest candidate to get out? In terms of your pledge to cooperate uh, with Senator McCarthy as you go, both go ahead, if you find at any stage, say, uh, after California, that in your judgment you cannot win, do you, would you throw your support to him rather than to the president? As I say, I'm in it to, to, to win. So I think that any of those questions are premature. I'll decide all of those matters uh, as if a contingency arises. Uh, that's not the contingency that I plan on. Senator Rogers, you have any plans to campaign for delegates in the South? Yes. I'll do whatever I can in the South. I don't know that the support will be overwhelming, but uh, I plan to go. I plan to talk about these matters. I don't think that they're matters that just affect uh, the northern states. I think that they're matters that affect the whole of the United States. Uh, I haven't uh, decided what uh, primaries that I will uh, go into at the moment. I just haven't decided what I'm going to do. The question was, how can I uh, be in it to win and, and uh, in addition to support Senator McCarthy? I think that I have something to offer to the uh, American people. I think at the moment, that, uh, that it's important uh, that the policies that we're following at the moment be reversed. I think it's important that the Amer I'm not in these primaries. I cannot go into these primaries. I think that it's important that the people speak in these states that they are opposed to the course that we're following uh, at the moment. And, uh, and uh, so that therefore, in that, we have a common effort. I also think that uh, from a positive point of view, in uh, other states where there are not primaries, where the vast majority of the delegates are selected from, 
as well as some states in which I'm still uh, able to go into the primaries, that I will be able to present my own candidacy and what I feel. So the primaries will be just a platform for your views? No, you I think they're far more important than that. I think the primaries are very important or very significant to give an opportunity for the uh, people to make some judgment themselves and to uh, have their voices heard. But you'll be trying to get votes for yourself in Oregon. That's right. McCarthy will be, and you'll be saying good things about him. I It'll be kind of awkward, right? Well, uh, it, I would uh, hope that uh, it would not. As I say, I think that we broaden the base of opposition to what we have at the moment. I think one of us going into one of those states uh, is not, it does not have as broad a base of following as uh, both of us going in. I think that people will look at the results and, and see that there was a heavy vote in opposition to the course of action that is being followed by the United States at the present time. I think that's what will be significant. That's what will be important. In addition to who wins the delegates. As I said in New Hampshire, it wasn't winning the delegates so much as the heavy vote in opposition to the course of action that is being followed in the United States. And I think that both of us can make that. You've talked about the presence. What concern or what uh, consideration have you given the possibility that the divided party may lose a great many uh, lower seats, governors, legislators? Well, I think that uh, what New Hampshire established, and that which was my reservation about going into New Hampshire, that this would be just the fact that I had divided the party based on personality clash, uh, with uh, why I wasn't willing to get involved that at that time into New Hampshire, that it would be divided on the basis of personality clash and that uh, the party would be divided uh, by me and by my effort. What has divided the party is not me, and not Senator McCarthy, but the pol policies that have been followed by uh, the present administration. I would hope that before this is finished and before this is completed and before the convention is over, that we can uh, uh, unite the party and have the strongest possible candidate with the, uh, with the, the candidates having presented their views across this country and in primaries, that we can have the strongest possible candidate to be selected at the Democratic National Convention. Troy? Uh, the question was, if uh, Senator McCarthy asked me to stay out of Wisconsin, uh, uh, would I cooperate with Senator McCarthy by staying out of Wisconsin if he asked me to? Certainly. Certainly. Senator? Senator? Certainly. Senator? Senator? One more question. Senator, we have, we have lost the support of our allies in Western Europe. What are you planning to I do? I would hope that the changes that I've suggested and the changes in policies in, uh, in Southeast Asia, uh, uh, what uh, needs to be done in order to strengthen ourselves at home will uh, bring uh, back uh, support for the United States, not only in Western Europe, but in Latin America and Africa and all across the rest of the country. I think that's been one of the great casualties of the war, not just uh, the divisions within our own country, not only the divisions within our own country, but the lack of confidence that exists in the United States and other places around the globe. Thank you, Thank you very much.